of our car, which also makes it very difficult to change him back there. If I'm by myself to try to get that out of the car, lift him up into the car, I have done it. And I still continue to do it because sometimes that to me is the better option than the floor. Um, and I've even used a grassy area outside and laid like a blanket down for him and changed him out there. But I'm still changing him in an area that should not happen, right? right like he's right. seven years old, he's getting bigger, he's growing. And I'm changing him in front of people walking by in a parking lot. I, you know, at the zoo, I had to change him somewhere in a grassy area. And I'm trying to have my other kids like, hold up stuff around us to try to give us some privacy. Either way, there needs to be changes made so that there are better accommodations for families like ours and all different stories across the US. But the, the number one thing is this one change can help benefit thousands of people. Right. And it's not just about autism and sensory processing disorder. That's our story and that's what our son struggles with. But I've been um, getting messages and texts and I mean, from all over, you know, um, people with spina bifida, MS, um, epilepsy, the elderly. I mean, this, mm -hmm. this is something I, we need people to think outside the box a little bit. I don't want people right. to hear, oh, oh, I don't know anyone with autism that wouldn't help me. Or I don't, right, I don't know anyone right. with a disability because disability is a tough word too, because it means so many things. Right. 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 Um, so I, I, I use that term lightly because um, this this one change can benefit so many different types of disabilities. It's not right. we're not narrowing this down to one thing. And again, I mean, you could be traveling with an elderly loved one. You know, you're taking a trip to Florida and you're at the airport. What do you do? Right. Right. So this this mm -hmm. is something that I feel like if we think a little bit, I bet you there's at least one person. A, a Everyone's like friend, somebody mm -hmm. somebody's impacted by it and. Um, you know, we have to stop feeling sheltered and that we can't go certain places or that our time is, you know, lived in an hour or two hour increments because we have to leave places and right, we have to is, go home. Which you I know? told you before, I have many friends that are like that, that they've just decided to stop going out, you know, to go out places. And I know that you had mentioned in some of the content that I had read that you're not putting out there saying, hey, Everywhere in the United States, ma and pa, little restaurants, and everybody has to have these 400-pound right. changing tables. <laughs> right. But at major places, at amusement parks, mm -hmm. and at airports, and yeah. malls, I mean, those mm -hmm. are, are places that people even get out just for the mental, you know, relief right. to, be able to walk with their right. family, you know, maybe they have conditions that, you know, they need to be in that environment where it's a safer environment, they can't go outside or they live somewhere where, you know, it's the winter time. I mean, we need to give people the opportunity to leave their homes and right. go to major places, the zoo. Right, <laughs> right. that's it. I, those, those are the top ones on my list. Hospitals, airports, amusement parks, sports arenas, movie theaters, the zoo, mm -hmm. highway rest stops. You right. know, oh, and isn't that interesting though? Like on hospitals, like yeah, how are they? I'm not waiting. In a, <laughs> I know I'm waiting in a waiting room, and I'm like, I'm waiting in a waiting room with you know, ten, you know, ten children sitting in wheelchairs, and not everyone in a wheelchair might need this, but a lot of them do. You know, and it right. just it just brings tears to my eyes thinking, what what do they do? Like it just. And that's why I think that this is so important. And we're not, we're talking about changing tables that also lower down low enough mm -hmm. um, so that people that are in wheelchairs, you know, the, the caretaker is not lifting them and trying to put them on a stable. It's more comfortable for them to move them over, raise it up so you mm -hmm. can change them. Um, you're not killing your back, you know, lower them back down, get them in their chair. I mean, thankfully our son is, is not in a wheelchair. We are very blessed for that. Um, but I, I truly understand and I have friends that do have children in wheelchairs and it just, it breaks my heart. And, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I, I shared our photo. I, I don't regret that at all. It took me a long time. I took that in the, that picture in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's something very personal. And I, I came out of the restroom that day with tears in my eyes. My husband's like, are you okay? And I just said, you know, at some point I want to share that, you know, I feel like Right. Look at how we struggle. There has to be other people out there that are feeling the same way. You know, there has to be something better. We can do better. There needs right. to be better. And it's just, um, I and mean, if the bottom point. line is it's not okay. Just like I had posted earlier, it's not okay. It's not okay for our elderly loved ones to lay on a dirty, you know, infested germ-ridden floor. It's not okay. Yeah. 
isolate there. This is human yeah. to me. And I feel like in society, we argue. I mean, how much controversy has been around bathroom issues, but none of it has been around this bathroom issue. That's mm -hmm. a problem when our priorities are not straight. You know, that we would let, you know, adults, elderly loved ones, and, you know, our youth lay on a dirty floor and not do anything about it, but we'll argue over senseless things about utilization of different bathrooms. But we, you know, don't even hold that um, at a high level. It just, it, to me, it just seems so crazy. And I think I shared with you that my son, um, he was not totally trained until he was 10. So we did experience it. And at that age, he was about 125 pounds. And so, you know, anyone who comes out to say, well, you should be more prepared and you should be more this. You know, I think, well, I've heard it. <laughs> I think, Christina, as we've talked, <laughs> yeah. that look on your face like, okay, do you really think that you have kids or adults that are big and you're not prepared? I mean, you're a other character. than the adult changing table, I have everything in my bag. I can't uh -huh. carry around the table. That's the only thing I'm missing. Um, but I have everything else in my bag, fully prepared. It's just, you know, right. And, and for him, it's, it's very hard for him to understand, um, like trying to change him standing up. You know, I've, I've heard some things about that as well, because he can stand. Um, Ethan is seven, um, but he mentally is not seven right? Mm -hmm. Like he's between the age of three and four. Um, and I know there's so much more up here. I know there is, I can see it in his eyes. Um, and it's, you know, I don't want to start crying, but he, he's still considered nonverbal. His, his verbal speech is very limited. He has some words now and we're building and growing from that, which is fantastic. It's so nice to hear his voice, but bottom line, he's not able to communicate his wants, his, need, his needs, his feelings with us. And when we're trying to change him standing up, I think he's really confused. He's always been changed laying down, right? So when we started trying to change him standing up, it became a very stressful situation, not only for himself, but whoever's trying to change him. And especially in a public setting, um, you're trying to lower the stress level and not try to amp things up, especially if you're not planning on leaving in that next three seconds. Um, so we do try to make it as least stressful um, and try to keep behaviors down when we're trying to do this. So um, that's not always the best option um, for him. So um, that being said, I, I'm not just speaking for my son. I'm speaking on behalf for every single person and family that could benefit from this one change that would make such a huge impact for people across the United States. I mean, everywhere really, but um, I'm trying my hardest and I'm not gonna stop here in PA to try to make some changes locally. And I know it's gonna happen. It's going to take time and you will all hear about it when it happens. But um, I just feel like to keep talking about it and keep sharing about it and reaching out to um, businesses. And you know, I've been in contact with a state representative and um, my goal here in PA would definitely be to get a bill created so that there are certain places that would be required to have at least right. one, like the airport, like hospitals, an amusement park, the movie theater. There are certain big places that I feel like mm -hmm. how many times, you know, people come in and out of there with all different needs. Um, and there, those are places to me that stand out that they need at least one. Mm -hmm. at least one. And so to get a bill passed would be my big, big goal. And um, I'm going to work towards that as well. But that's going to take even more time. So until then, I am just making phone calls and emailing and reaching out to anyone I can think of. And people are being really receptive of it and um, very positive on it. Um, I don't want to say too much because things are still in the works. But um, I'm, I'm staying very positive and very hopeful. And uh, this mom has not given up. I know that this is something a lot of people would benefit that from. That fire. <laughs> yes, it's big. <laughs> really big. Really um, big. It is. It is really big. And the other thing that we chatted about that sometimes people don't even think is that this changing table, technically, you could have it in a facility and you could change a baby on it. It's just a bigger size. Yeah. So right. you know, the difference is, is a baby changing table, you only have that amount of room, so you can't add more to it. And right. a full-size changing table, a baby could go on there as well. 
you mm -hmm. know? So in, in a not so perfect world, if someone was only able to have one in their facility, that might be an option. I mean, right. I don't know what regulations or anything that, you know, for the baby changing tables need to go by and if that's a possibility, but that seems kind of um, a good option. Yeah, I definitely think so. So I feel like um, a baby changing station, if it's still in like a public restroom that has 10 stalls, five stalls, something like that, mm -hmm. I feel like they, they also need to be in men's rooms and women's mm -hmm. <laughs> restrooms. You know, I've heard that too. And I, and I agree. I totally agree with that. But I feel like in a family style restroom, I mean, the baby changing table really wouldn't be needed if there were one of these. Um, you can put a baby on it as well. I mean, these things hold up to about 400 pounds. They're six mm -hmm. feet long, hold up to 400 pounds. Um, so, and like I said, they lower to about 18 inches off the ground. Um, the gentleman that I've been speaking to, an owner of a company called Maxability, I had the um, pleasure of meeting him last week. We were at the um, ADA conference here in Pittsburgh uh, that he invited me to, to come meet him and talk to him and um, see the beds that he, ma he makes and everything and sells. And um, the few that are here in the U.S., um, a lot of them have come from his company. So um, it was really awesome to meet him and to see firsthand how much this can benefit um, people out there and families everywhere. So... And now yeah. when we look at something like that as a business, like a cost, did you get any idea of about how much it costs to put those into a facility, like $5,000, $10,000? Yeah, so the two different beds that he was talking to me about um, that are kind of like his top sellers, um, there is one that is kind of like you can bolt it into the ground. So this one is stationary. It does move up and down, but this is not something that like folds up or moves left and right. Um, so this is kind of stationary. It would be perfect in like a family style restroom and it just stays right there. Um, you can lower it down. It goes down to about 18 inches off the floor and it raises up. You can change them. You can raise it, uh, lower it back down. And um, that one, I believe, is around 2400 I believe okay. he said. Um, and so that, again, that one um, is like bolted into the ground. So you wouldn't have to like put anything on the wall or anything like that. So that one is a cheaper option um, than the mm -hmm. other one. The other one I think he said is more used in like hospitals and things like that, which is the one bed, the one I was looking online that I, I really liked because it is on the wall. Um, okay. Whenever you're finished, it kind of folds back up. So it okay. doesn't take up that mm -hmm. space all the time. Right. Um, so again, it would, um, you, it would latch down like this. Again, it would lower down to about 18, 18 inches off the ground. You can lower, uh, raise it back up with um, your loved one on it change them, lower it back down, and then clean it off, and then put it back up on the wall, which I think is really awesome. Um, that one's a little bit more expensive. I think he said between six and seven. So, I mean, I don't want you to quote awesome. me, but um, yeah. So just so you can see the price difference, but right. they are like two totally different styles. Um, again, I think they're both great beds. I think it depends on what the company is looking for, where it's located, where the bed is going to be located. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what I mean? And, um, what kind of patients and people are going to be put on a bed like that. So, um, I think that's all things to take into consideration. It's probably personal preference as well. Um, obviously the one on the wall, you, there'd be more work, right. And a little bit more cost right. entailed in that because, you, I mean, the, the machine itself, I believe, weighs close to 200 pounds. I mean, you're talking about being able to hold 400 pounds on this right. changing table that's six right. feet long. So um, right. it, they are big. Um, and of course, there's ADA regulations. And um, my husband has kind of been helping me with that part of it. He is a plumber. So he knows a lot of the ADA regulations and things like that. And being at the conference, it was nice to talk to people about that as well. Um, and I kind of have like a image um, that I have printed out that shows like you would need a room of this size at the smallest right. to be able to have something like that. Because even if it's up on the wall, I think you still have to have those it's regulations. So like the perimeters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And right. the reason so. that I bring that up is that we have these arenas and airports and mm -hmm. malls and all these places that are being built in construction. These are million and billion dollar establishments. Mm -hmm. Spending 2,000, 5,000, 7,000, 15,000, or even $50,000 on something that goes in a bathroom is like a drop uh, and a penny in a bucket. <laughs> like, so when you look at it in the big spectrum of things, you're putting up a billion dollar complex, you know, or a facility. Right. And you can't put in one changing table that costs between two and seven thousand dollars. 
again. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it, it just, some things just blow my mind and this topic has blown my mind for so long now. I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it. Why it's still an issue, you know? Yeah. I think, I mean, I know, I now know that there are moms and women and men just searching for this as well. Um, once I, once our story was kind of shared nationally, um, mm -hmm. it's awesome to see though, that like, I'm not lonely over here, you know, <laughs> that there's other people, um, fighting for this and you just have to keep fighting and talking about it and, mm -hmm. and asking and just be a voice and be heard. Darn it. <laughs> like, right. And I'm so not, I'm, and it's so nice to know I'm not alone. Are, right. And some of the steps that you're taking, um, because you're in Pittsburgh. So right. I mean, telling you, Christina, she's got a lot of fire because we have been <laughs> hanging out now for a long time this evening, trying to get on this live <laughs> and they're an hour ahead. So it's 1030 there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I hardly ever sleep. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> That's it's a part fine. of being a mom on a mission. We don't sleep. That's part of it. That's, <laughs> That's right. Criteria. Oh, I know. Um, I sit here and I, I've got my little, my little folder I've been writing in notes and ideas and people I've spoken to and and putting it all together. So if there is other parents that are listening tonight and they're saying, what would be maybe the steps that I actively could take to get out there and use a voice and make a difference? You know, would it be going to somebody, you know, in our community legislature, you know, that sort of mm -hmm. thing? Where was your first stop for that? And then getting your um, story on the news and all sorts of things. Sure, sure. So honestly, the first thing I did, I created a, a video in a restroom. I was with my daughter and just said, turn the phone on, let's do this. Like if Ethan was with us, we'd have nowhere to change them, right? I also brought up some sensory issue things in there, which again, unless that's something that you deal with, not a lot of people understand that. But um, if you have a child with sensory processing disorder, sensory issues, you'll hear me on that. But um, the automatic toilet flush, the the blow dryers that are crazy and they will go off even if your hands aren't underneath him. So it's very, very scary for him, but we wear his noise canceling headphones on him. Still very, very loud. So I bring it up in the video, but the main purpose was the adult changing table. And you know, even the baby changing table, he's too big for that. So I'd, I'd have to lay him on the floor. So I started with that and seeing the, the, um, responses I was getting from it. I said, Oh my, Oh my gosh. Like do we have to keep going with this. And I was talking mm -hmm. to a friend and she said, have you ever heard of change change.org? You should create a petition. So I created a petition and I was like, that sounds like a great idea. So then thousands and thousands of signatures. And I'm like, well now what? <laughs> so I kind of just kept going. And, um, so I got in contact with the state uh, representative and um, I spoke to him, I, I sat down with him, he was very, very kind and kind of, he led me to the next person. Um, I, I spoke to her and then she, it's kind of like a <laughs> chain reaction. I just, they keep getting me in contact with different people that will help me get to that next step. And that's fine. I don't care if there's a million steps, I'm going to get to that last right. step where something's right. going to happen. So I'm grateful for each and every one because I feel like without them, I can't get to that next step. So um, I just feel like to keep talking about it and just start somewhere. Um, I think by signing the petition for me, that kind of backs up how important this truly is um, because the people signing the petition aren't just here in Pittsburgh. I mean, people are signing that petition from all over, which is fantastic. Um, but I also just, I, if I'm somewhere and I think, you know, at a baseball field or, you know, and I'm like, well, I need to find out who is the owner or president or whatever of this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm contacting these people. I'm reaching out to um, different companies and organizations and just saying, hey, I have this thought. What do you think? Do you think we could try to get the ball rolling on something made? And um, that's kind of where I am. And I think that if you're not here in Pittsburgh and you're somewhere else, that's definitely a starting point is to kind of just get out there and start talking to people. And if they can't help you, hopefully they can kind of lead you in the right direction on someone that can, because I, I keep feeling like that's kind of where I'm going is if they can't help me, they, they lead me to that next person. And, and that's totally fine. Um, so I kind of just, um, lots of phone calls, lots of emails. And I, I, I fully understand that this is not going to happen overnight. Like I don't expect there to be 50 adult <laughs> changing tables here in Pittsburgh by next week. It's not going to happen. These things right. take time and they are, they are cost. 
Um, it takes time to contact people in that, especially when you're trying to talk to big, very important people. I feel like I'm like this peanut, you know, like I, I'm trying to reach the big guys. So, um, and sometimes to get there, you have to just keep, keep fighting. But, um, I don't know. I think, I mean, like I said, I think it's, it would be helpful to sign the petition. It shows how much of a need it is, but at the same time, I'm um, just getting out there and using your own voice and you will be heard if you keep talking about it and mm -hmm. keep pushing, you definitely will be heard for sure. And, and we're going to drop that petition below this. Um, live and inside of the podcast and all of that. So if people want to actively go, you know, on there and sign that petition. Um, in addition, I know, you know, Christina, you're very active on, you have a Facebook page for, yes. you know, your son and your journey. And what is the name of that again? Love, Hope, and Autism. Love, Hope, and Autism. Mm -hmm. um, plus, Christina is a part of our on-air advocate community, so you can find her. So, I mean, I think that you are very resourceful, but you're also very open to share, talk to other moms. So, you know, if you're here in dads, so if you're here in a different state, like we're in Wisconsin, and you have questions and things like that, you know, someone like Christina can definitely say, hey, I think there might be this organization there, right, in, in your community. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't, I love when people reach out. I love, and I, and some, and so many people have been helping me as well. So people have been reaching out to me yeah. for guidance, but also vice versa. Um, and I've met some really great people and Sarah, who's going to be on tomorrow. Um, it's just been life changing so far. Me, I, I would love to meet her just speaking to her through online. And, um, you know, she's, she's a powerhouse. Like she's, she's making changes too. And I just, um, what an honor to have been connected to her through this journey so far. And, um, like I said, we all have very, very different stories. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's, that's the great thing about this is that we are all connected in some way, even though our stories and backgrounds are so different. Um, and, but welcoming with open arms, is just amazing to reach this big goal you know? Um, so it's, it's really, really awesome. So, um, she got me in touch with like the changing spaces and they, it's just this powerhouse of a group just trying to get these changes made in all different States. Right. So, um, she, well, they all welcomed me in there as well. And I think the building of awareness, I mean, and people putting things out and not being afraid, like, you know, you put that picture of your son out there and you knew that, you know, it was very emotional for you, but not knowing bad or good or how people will receive it, but it really is reality. You know, like sometimes people, like I said, if they're not living it or they're not touched by it on a daily basis, don't realize what others are going through every single day for a simple task, like wanting to walk through the mall. Like wanting to go to, you know, a large grocery store or to a large festival or to take their loved ones out. And this isn't just for kiddos. And I love that you bring up, it's not just about autism. It's not just about MS. It's not just about elder, you know, our elderly loved ones. It's a huge, huge, this is hundreds of yeah, thousands of millions, <laughs> millions of people. It really is. And you know what? I read your story, you know, um, as I came to you, I sought you out. I was in the hospital <laughs> with my son <laughs> tonight and I'm scrolling and I'm like, our new station channel 12 had shared your story. And as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you know what? You know, I got this big changing room here and everything. There ain't no changing table here. And I'm at the hospital with my son um, at a children's yeah. hospital. Um, and so I just, the need is so great. And I just wish that, um, I just wish that others sometimes would think that they, uh, of how the process that people are going through with different abilities, suffering from different medical conditions, taking care of their elderly loved ones, that it's not just as simple as to pick up and go. There's so much thought process that goes <laughs> into each and every place you go. Yeah. Some, I mean, honestly, sometimes it takes longer to get out of the house and to get there than we are there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and nobody should have to live the way, like I said, some of my friends, you know, live their lives at two and a half hours at a time. It, it, there shouldn't yeah. be something like that in our day, this day and age. And when we're right. talking about something that is equipment that is under $10,000 for huge establishments like airports, I, mm -hmm. I don't think that that's a huge ask, you know? And right. So and, that, and that's what I try to tell people, you know, we have a little restaurant here right at the end of our street. I would never walk in there and ask them, for something like that, 
you know, like, would it be great if they had one? Sure. But I wouldn't expect a place like that to have, you know, we'd go there, we'd eat dinner, we have eaten there, you know, Mm -hmm. thankfully, we're right down the road. So if he has an accident, we can just go right home. Right. But um, I just feel like, I mean, especially in our case, you know, autism can take over on our day when we're out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, We really cannot spend a whole day out. It just, it doesn't happen. It's too overstimulating for him. But what makes me sad is if he's having a good day, you know, and we've been out for an hour or two hours and he's so happy. And then something like that comes up. That's what breaks my heart because damn it. Autism was letting us have a good day. Right. You know? And right. if this was out there, we would, we could have stayed or we didn't have to leave or, you know, I'm not, he's not flipping out, walking back to the car or flipping out, changing on a bathroom floor. Like there are, we can do better. They knew better. And it's not okay. It's not okay. And we need to get our priorities straight. When we think of the senseless things in our world that we argue about, we need to, we need to get it straight. Yes, definitely. Okay. You're going to get me crying. I know (laughs) the more we talk, I'm just going to get emotional. So all right. So on I that, I am excited to have um, Sarah, who you know you know as well, and she is local here in Wisconsin. So we're going to hear from her tomorrow. Um, in addition awesome. to that, I have some more families later on in the week that we're also going to hear from their journeys and their stories. Uh, I am so happy, Christina, that you hung with all of the technical issues. <laughs> and, I mean, I feel like our live viewers have never gotten to see just like random yeah. um, technology. <laughs> with us in the interview. So a little turbulent to start, um, but I'm glad that we were able to share this message tonight and get it out. I'm going to drop the petition below. Also, your Facebook page and whatnot, we'll drop that below. So people want to connect with you, you know, they can that way as well. So is there anything else you'd like to share before we go? No, I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to do this and this opportunity and just helping me share and spread the awareness and the really huge need for this. And just to start off the week of just amazing people that are to come to follow and to share their stories and to just, you know, really get this out there and that that this needs to change. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you. And it's time for change, everybody. Yes. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go. Yes. So on that, thank you all for listening to episode 49 of the On Air Advocate. If you want to find any of our other tutorials, YouTube videos, or any of other social media applications, you can hop right on over to onairadvocate.com. Also, our private On Air Advocate community has launched. So if you're viewing this right now on Facebook, it's like right up on the top of the page. You just... (laughs) as a group and you can join us in the group and Christina is there and Sarah who is on tomorrow she's also there so definitely feel free to jump into the community and share your stories as well because this is all about us all coming together and sharing our stories and journeys all right so on that have a great night Christina thank you you too bye thank you so much thank you